You are listening and watching to a very special podcast. Let's continue where we left off, shall we? In Maggie's point of view. Enjoy! Maggie faced off against Dr. Wintington. During the battle, Dr. Wintington began to tell his story about BB. Bella Venetia John Quill. She started off as just an unnamed orphan girl. At a very young age, she was just normal. But there was something about her that was pretty strange. Something that attracted the doctor, and he kidnapped the unnamed girl. The poor orphan girl was going through so many experiments that involved with infestations. She couldn't take it anymore. The whole pain, the procedure, made her very different. And she hated it so much that she couldn't even stand herself being in an infestation. However, there was one man that managed to help her out. His name was Laurence Bell. Laurence Bell was quite different from all the rest. His full name was Lawrence Bell John Quill. He was almost like a father to BB. And he was the one that gave the girl, the experimental girl, a name. Bella Venetia. It came from the name of Beauty and the Beast. It was as if BV was both beauty and beast. And just like the fairy tale, the beauty could see the goodness inside of the beast. However, one day Dr. Whittington finally figured out what was going on and he killed the doctor. The other one, Dr. John Quill. As he laid there dying, Lawrence told BB, You, BB, I want you to know something. You were always beautiful to me, no matter what you were. That made Wintington really, really irritated. Can you imagine seeing the beauty inside a beastly girl? Maggie realized some things. Her best friend that she knew had lied to her, but for some good reasons. I can't believe it. Evie lied because she was ashamed to admit that she was half infestation. I see now. You know what? You may see my best friend as a beastly girl, but she's one of the most beautiful people I've ever met. She was the one that helped me out when nobody else did. When I was beaten, when my clothes were torn, when every single part of my innocence was just stripped from me. She was there to comfort me, help me. She knew better than anyone. She knew about the pain I went through. Besides, you're the one that violated her and ruined her life. You know what? It's my turn now to show you the true meaning of a beast. Maggie fought the doctor, using only just the manifestation power of blood that she absorbed from her deceased father and took down the guy. Then she decided to do one thing, destroy the remains of Nevermore, so it will never again breathe any fruit to the earth. 
and she was going to let the doctor die. Once everyone escaped from the crumbles of the building, they couldn't believe how much they lifted the curse of Nevermore. It was pretty crazy to believe, but it was actually hard to believe how much pain they went through. Now it was finally over. However, Walter pointed out something. Look, I can still see him. There he is. Sure enough, Dr. Wintington was still alive, but he was bleeding and he was very much injured. But he looked like a coward as he saw the infestation surrounding him. No, please have mercy. Help me. Help me, please, he said in a timid voice. Seeing this was very horrifying. Then Belissa did something. She grabbed Helda's gun, pointed over, and she rapidly fired at all the infestation, including the doctor. Once that was done, she dropped the gun and she ran for her life. She had to take a moment to be alone. She was terrified. Just the thought of shooting all of them made her sick. However, she managed to vomit. Sting came over. Uh, you okay? He asked. Ugh. I can't believe I did that. Yeah, I'm shocked. You gonna be alright? Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know. You just want to put him out of his misery. And also at the same time, maybe you were trying to do something good. But this is the first time I killed somebody. I just, I can't believe I would do such a thing to myself. I mean, who would have thought this was going to be my first kill? Oh, man. And my dad was once a bounty hunter. I never knew how much shit he had to put up with. But it was so... Basilissa said, but she felt like she was going to faint. However, Sting caught her and then looked at her and said, But you know what? I think this is your first lesson on taking down the bad guys. I mean, us, we're not even killers. But you know, when you take a life, it pretty much stays with you in your head. Does it ever, does the pain ever ease, or does it hurt? Don't worry. Sometimes bad people, they have grief, but also at the same time, some of them don't. And that's the people you gotta take down. Said Sting. Thanks, Sting. I think I feel better now. I'll be fine. Really, I will. Okay. <laughs> uh, you got me worried. Man, how do I get stuck with the psycho girls? Psychos? We're not a bunch of psychos. Are you crazy? What? <laughs> I thought what you did was pretty crazy. Oh, so now Maggie's a psycho? Ah, she's not that bad. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, you're pretty crazy. But if you want to hear from me on crazy, then... <laughs> nah. Well, you know what? I always... Hearing the stories about how you used to be so 
evil? I don't think you're evil. What? Evil? Okay. I was pretty much a bad guy before. Now, I've changed. Yeah, and you're the new guild master. Yep. And you know what? I was wrong about you. You're not really a bad person. Nope. You're just really a dork. Basilisk was dead and she walked away. Sting was stunned. A dork? You thought I was a... You think I'm a dork? Yeah. You're a dork. Get it? Aw, oh, come on. I'm a lot cooler. Well, uh, wait a sec. Not too much cooler, yeah, including me. We're in the same league. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Rogue made me a brooding guy, but hey, he's a geek. Okay? You and him, you're both the biggest dorky dragon slayers I know. Natsu, on the other hand, he's a... Uh, well, I was going to say freak, but no, that's not very nice. He's more like a nerd. Same with Gajio. Where does Deck? What about Laxus? Laxus? Ah, ain't nobody got time for him. I have to put him on a good list of cool. He's the definition of cool. And as for Wendy, she's just a cutie. A cutie? So I'm a dork and, and Rogue's a geek? What? Did she just call me a geek? Yeah, she called you a geek. What? Hey, come on. The greatest dragon slayers of Sabretooth are not dorks. Yeah, they're not dorks. You're right. They're not dorks. They're just both. Both what? Um, maybe nerds? Nerds? Maggie watched them as she shook her head. Smiling though. Oh, brother. Hey, where did Lola go? Oh, she, um, she said that she had something to take care of. Oh, okay. Good to have you back, Helda. Maggie said. Yeah. Come on. I'll take you to my mom's place. So they went there. However, there she was, Phoebe. She looked normal again, and Maggie had a talk with her. Why didn't you tell me that you were an infestation? Mags, remember when you found out about the manifestation and you called yourself a freak and you couldn't even stand yourself being like that and also how of what you were going through? Yeah. Well, I was afraid to tell you because I was afraid what you were going to think of me. I thought I was going to be a freak. What? Phoebe. I was upset before, but then I realized I was chosen to slay all of the manifestation off this earth. I bet you were chosen to maybe do the same thing. What good is it for me? I'm nothing but a monster. You're not. You're my best friend. Even though you lied about not being like me, but it's okay. You went through something so worse that you were ashamed of. But it's okay. I always consider you my sister. Really? Evie asked. Of course. Come on, the others need us. I don't think we're done here yet. Maggie said. The two girls made up and they went back to the crew. Thank you for listening and watching. See you guys next time.